that was that was uh, that was quick. Like you expected a fight to end so quickly. Um, that's what I trained for. You know, I I, I knew um, when I fought Lineker and I was able to stand and bang with him for two rounds, and he got hurt within two minutes. I knew he was going to look for the takedown. So uh, you know, that's something that me and my team prepared for. And, you know, up against the cage, I felt comfortable, and I wanted to make him make a mistake and, you know, have the guillotine there for me. I spoke to um, Phil Harris uh, this week uh, and asked him about the, the tweet he sent out last week. I yeah. spoke to you about it too. Yeah. Uh, a bit of twist of fate there, because he sent out a picture that said that he's got the, the most submissions in the current crop of lightweights, uh, flyweights, sorry. Uh, and there you go, you win by submission. Yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, irony. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool, though, you know. Uh, I, I didn't want my fiance's, you know, four months pregnant, so her watching the fight kind of, you know, uh, I don't want to give her a heart attack. But uh, so I told her I'll, I'll make it this one quick. I'll go out there and finish it fast. What was it like performing in the O2 Arena? Um, it was awesome, man. You know, I just I love I love the energy of the crowd. You know, and then they uh, they cheered at first, and they started booing me when they announced my name. And my coach was like, uh, you know, don't let it get to you. And I'm like, I love it, man. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, and we kind of turned those boos into tears, so it was pretty cool. Were you happy that you were able to get the, the finish quickly uh, without sustaining any damage? And, and how quickly would you like to perform again? Uh, yeah, that, that, that was awesome. You know, I had a long time off because I got injured twice in training. So I, I, I don't think I got hit cleanly, kind of grazed me once. But I want to get back out there. Um, you know, I have another kid on the way that's due in July. So I want to get a fight in there before then, maybe in uh, you know, May or June. That way I don't have to uh, you know, worry about missing the, the birth of my second kid. Yeah. Lewis, um, sorry, you were getting some success with those elbows, and we've seen recently that they're quite devastating and can finish fights. What made you switch to a guillotine? Because um, I, I felt the guillotine was there. You know, I had my hand under his chin, and he was kind of defending. I threw a couple elbows, and my coach, you know, told me to keep going. But, uh, you know, once I knew the, the move was on, I, I kind of cinched it up, you know, and uh, I looked at my coach, I looked at the crowd, and I was like, yeah, I got it. So you knew right away when you had it locked up that he was going to tap? Oh, I, he was either tapping or he was going to sleep. I, I knew right away the fight was over right there. He tried to slam me and we, and we flipped around and stuff, but I finished it from the mount. I knew I had it. It's several weeks of training, weight cutting. I mean, it takes. It ends after a minute and 13 seconds. Is there any downsides to that? Uh, it, it sucks a little bit, but, you know, it's always good to go out there and not, you know, not have a tough fight and sustain injury or get hit and stuff like that. But you train, you train hard so the fight is easy. You know, if you train easy, then the fight's going to be hard. I spoke to both you and Phil this week about going into this fight with a 1-2 and two record in the UFC um, and there was probably a lot of pressure on you that you both internalized. Um, can you sympathize with Phil and, and do you have any kind of words of uh, advice to kind of how he can maybe handle this loss, um, his third now in the UFC? Um, it, I mean, losing sucks, you know, there, there's, there's no lower point when you lose a fight, there's no higher point when you win a fight, so it's something you just got to deal with. Um, mm. Nah, I don't know what to tell you know I, I like the guy we, he was really respectful and cordial I, I don't want to hand him a loss that you know gets him out of the UFC but it's either me or him and you know I'm not going anywhere talking about um, opponents uh, obviously Ian McCauley was supposed to fight before uh, who, who's next for Lewis Gardner whoever the UFC wants to put me with you know um, Ian McCall calls me out a bunch of times said I called him out it's, it's whatever the UFC wants to have you know what I mean anything that's going to get me uh, you know closer to a title shot you know, uh, my loss against Tim Elliott kind of set me back. I had some momentum with John Lineker. But um, whoever they want to put me in there with, man, I don't care. How long will you keep the hair green for? The hair is staying green for the, for the rest of my career. You know, when I retire, then I'll go back to my normal hair color. It was the first fight of a night, so it's still early to see it. But it's a candidate for, for performance of a night with a submission finish. If you should get the bonus, is there anything special that you're looking to spend it on? Um, I'll just get ready for my second kid that's on the way. That's all. Put some money aside and... You know, maybe take a vacation with my family, get right back to work, man. Get back Sensible to training. choice. Yeah, yeah. Are you able to reflect now that the fight's over on your experience fighting here in the UK? Uh, yeah, man. It's just been, it's just been an awesome experience. Everybody was really nice. The fans were cool. Like I said, I got a couple of boos when I went out there and stuff. But uh, no, nah, man, it was a good experience. You know, I thought the time change and stuff would mess me up a little bit. It wasn't too bad. I think the booze are probably more theatre, more than anything else, you being the American. Yeah, I think so. You know, every, every fan that I saw, they were real respectful and cordial. Some guys came up to me uh, last night, and uh, he actually told me, you know, I, I made a bet on you, so hopefully you win. And uh, as I'm walking out of the cage, going back, he's like, Lewis, Lewis. I won the bet, you're the man. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool, that's good. Um, I, I spoke to you about um, being one of the first fighters this year to be performing on uh, UFC's Fight Pass. Um, maybe when this uh, card was initially announced, not many fighters knew um, that this was going to be on Fight Pass. Uh, moving forward, um, if you um, knew that there's a card that is going to be distributed on Fight Pass, would you have any hesitation in taking that on? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, you know, my, my team, Tiger Showman, we have uh, 50 schools 
in uh, the Northeast and stuff. So I have a lot of students and, and students from my school, but also other schools that you know follow my career and they look up to me and stuff. So the fight pass was kind of cool because everybody's like, you know, how do we watch the fight? It's just go on fight pass and you sign up. So everybody, you know, was hit me up on Facebook and Twitter and stuff that they signed up for it and they were able to see the fight real easy, which is pretty cool. So I don't mind. Cool.